Good morning. Welcome to Memorial Heights Baptist Church this morning. This is family day, as you can see. Look at all the children. That's awesome, isn't it? So uh, we're going to get started here with a hymn, and uh, we're going to sing Power in the Blood. You can stand with me. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you do evil your victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter? much whiter than snow there's power in the blood power in the blood sin stains of sin's life-giving flow there's wonderful power in the blood there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. You may be seated. several requests for this one. You taught the sun where to stand in the morning. Who told the ocean you can only come this the same gentle hands 
that hold me when I'm broken. They conquer death to bring me victory. Since this weekend is uh, Memorial Day weekend, and a lot of people get that somewhat confused uh, with Veterans Day, this is a time we honor those who gave the, uh, their life. They made the supreme sacrifice for our country down through the years since the beginning of this country. So while it's nice to have picnics and parties and automobile sales, the real meaning of this, uh, of this weekend of Memorial Day is to honor those who uh, were willing to die so that we could be free and be here this morning. So uh, let's take about uh, uh, 30 seconds or so and have a moment of silence just to remember what this, uh, this day uh, coming up Monday really means.
Thank you. Uh, just to let you know, uh, if you're looking for something to do that more keeps in line with what Memorial Day is, tomorrow at 2 o'clock out at Rocky Gap Veterans Cemetery, we will be having a uh, Veterans Day service. I'll be with the Vietnam Veterans Color Guard. We'll have other units out there, and there's music, and it's, a, it's always been a, a good event. Okay, I've got some announcements. And uh, today, as you can look around, you can see it's Family Sunday. It's a Family Sunday service. Our children, there's no children's church or nursery today, but we do have the crying room available. You go through the, the uh, balcony up there, and you can go to the crying room if you have a, a child that you need to uh, take for some reason, but it is open. There's no evening service tonight, so we will make, make sure everyone's aware of that. No evening service tonight. There will be no weight loss meeting this week but they will, they will resume, resume uh, in, a, in a week from this coming Wednesday. Uh, the, there's a, the VBS announcement is that there is a, a sign-up sheet in the back. They still need workers. They still need uh, workers in several departments, so talk to Ron or Linda if you have, or Stacy, I should say, if you have issues or if you'd like to help out with that. Uh, we're collecting baby bottles full of change for first wave pregnancy up until Father's Day. So you have until a couple of two, three weeks or so. Empty bottles are up here in the front if you need to pick one up. There's also envelopes if you'd just like to give a check. Uh, next month, June 12th, we will be honoring our graduates. So if you uh, or your child is graduating for, at any level from anywhere, please uh, contact the church office with all the relevant information by the end of the month because we don't want to miss anyone. Also, we had to postpone the thank you fellowship for Nick and Nicole due to sickness in the family, and we will let you, and that was going to be last Sunday night, but the, we will let you know when the new date is. Now, if the ushers want to come forward now, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, list a few prayer requests we have, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to lift up Loretta Emmerich, Jean Sturtz, Dave Mawinney's Aunt Ruth, uh, Cindy Twig. Peggy Williams, Julie Smith, Diane McKenzie, Kenny Butts, Bob and Carlene McCullough. Uh, again, VBS that uh, Ron will have uh, all the uh, staffing he needs to make that again a successful time where uh, children can come and hear about the, the Jesus Christ and their need for salvation. And we want to lift up all those who are sick that we don't we didn't mention, and we don't have everybody's name on here. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't we mention this person or that person? Uh, God knows who they are. And we want to uh, pray for those who've lost loved ones in the, in the past, the recent past, distant past. Pray for the citizens of Ukraine and Russia as that goes on over there. And certainly, and certainly we need to pray for our nation. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for, uh, for uh, bringing us here this morning. Father, we thank you for this church. Father, we thank you for, uh, for the salvation you provided, God, through the blood, shed blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this morning, if there's someone in, that's come in here this morning, perhaps as a guest or a visitor, or maybe a long-time attender that's never taken care of that matter, they've never put their personal faith and trust personally in Jesus Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day, that they, they will certainly hear how to do that, and they will hear all about that during, uh, during the message this morning. Father, we pray for the service, we pray for the special music, we pray for every aspect of this uh, time we're having together here this morning, and we pray for this offering we're about to take up that will be used wisely and for your honor and glory, and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm sorry, I had one, one announcement I forgot to give. Go ahead and pass out. Uh, Hearts for Missions is Saturday, this Saturday, at my wife, yeah. Uh, she reminded me. It's uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Please bring your mission book, and if you don't have one, see Rhonda.
That was incredible, buddy. You've been holding out on us. You can expect to do that more often. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all ready to worship the Lord this morning? All right, a couple of you are. Well, we're all going to stand if you're able, amen? Stand with us if you're able. I know y'all know this one. It seems to be my, my favorite go-to song. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. And
put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love amen oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better
awesome privilege we have to be in your house this morning. I'd like to pray a special prayer for the families that have lost loved ones defending our freedoms in this country, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will be especially near to them today, Lord Jesus, as their loss will be heavy. And Father God, I hope they know from the rest of us that we, we can never thank them enough for their sacrifice. So I pray you bless them indeed. Father God, I just thank you for this, this church, for these people. Lord God, I pray you'll bless them indeed. I pray your anointing on the rest of the service. I pray that you're, you'll bless Reverend McBride, Lord God, that his words will be your words. And everything you want to be said will be said. So Father God, we again thank you for this day. We pray that you'll use us as you see fit. And we give this day back to you for the gift that it is, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'd like to introduce Reverend Bruce McBride. He is the Director of Pastoral Care for UPMC. He will be 
bringing God's word to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, brother. What a joy to be here with you today. And, and you thought that Delfest was exciting. Man, these, these folks here were just, a, just a, a huge blessing. And thank you for leading that amazing worship. We appreciate it so very much. You're turning in your Bibles to Matthew 14. Matthew 14. I want to remind you that tomorrow when you enjoy the, uh, the hot dogs and the burgers and the barbecue and the corn and the cob, that you'll pause and thank God for the sailors, the soldiers, the airmen, coast guardsmen, all the military that uh, served our nation and did not come home and are buried in thousands of cemeteries across our nation and overseas. There are thousands of military buried overseas. I remember when we went to uh, my, my dad and my mom and I went to visit uh, Germany, visited my brother who was in the U.S. Army. He took us to a huge cemetery in Luxembourg, small country of Luxembourg. It's a little tiny postage stamp. And this massive American cemetery, huge with thousands of our troops buried over there in Europe. I was amazed, I was moved with emotion, and I walked over to General George Patton's cemetery where he's buried, right there in Luxembourg, and paid homage and honor to General Patton. Amazing leaders. Matthew 14 this morning, the message is, is on what happens in the, in the storms. What do we do when there's storms in our lives? I look out across this church this, this morning, and there are folks that I know, folks that are my friends, folks that I've pastored in the past, and I have visited your loved ones, some of them in the hospital. I've prayed with many of your loved ones in the hospital, uh, have had funerals for your families in, in, the, in, the, in the past years, and seen God do some great things in the midst of storms. Our nation is in a storm right now. Our country is a mess. You can't watch the news very, very long till you want to launch your cat through a, a goalpost and go three points. Because you can't watch the news too long or you get too get depressed and discouraged and you want to hit something or leave the room. You, we need to be praying for our, our nation in the storm that we're in. Amen, friend? I thank God for Memorial Heights Baptist Church. I thank God for your stand on the gospel. I thank God for your leaders. I thank God for uh, the folks who love to come here and your pastor and his wife have done an, an amazing job. But I want to help you today to understand that Jesus knows about your issues. He knows about what you're facing, what you've been through, what you're going to be going through in the coming weeks and months and years to come if the Lord tarries. What happens in the midst of storms? What happens when Jesus tells his disciples to get into a boat and go across the Sea of Galilee and he knows the storm's coming? And he knows the waves are going to be coming into the boat and they're going to be scared out of their, out of their minds and they're fishermen. He knows all about it. I watched a little bit of the news this week when the pastor from a Baptist church there just outside of Uvalde, Texas, spoke about giving hope and refuge and strength to his hurting community there in Texas after this horrible uh, thing that happened there. And the pastor shared about God's grace. He shared about God's comfort. He shared about the Holy Spirit that comforts us when we don't have the answers and we deal with the unknowns. And, and what a great pastor who shared God's word on national Fox News this past week. Amazing. And they let him share. And they didn't interrupt him or tell him, that's enough, cut, a commercial break. They let him share. It was awesome. We need to understand, my friends, that we don't live by explanations. We live by promises. And the promises of God are real. In the midst of hurt and questions and wonder, our God is still there. Matthew 14. Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with a huge meal. He has multiplied 
five little crackers and two uh, pickled fish. And he sends his disciples in verse number 22 into a boat. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Pause there. He told the disciples, get in the boat and go across. No questions asked. Verse 23, he sends them away, and he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And now the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, He was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Powerful portrayal of how do you handle the, the storms of life. Number one, How do you handle it? He brought me here. He brought me here. He brought me to this place in my life, and there are storms of correction and storms of perfection. Sometimes we go through a storm because God wants to correct your way of life. He wants to straighten you out. He wants to get you on the right path. And God will use circumstances, discipline, pain, hurt, to get you on the right path. Sometimes we don't know why we're going through the hurt, and we never will know until Jesus comes back and we see him face to face. There are storms of correction and storms of perfection to help us to grow in our faith with the Lord. I want you to understand something this morning, my dear friends. As I work in the hospital at UPMC, I see all kinds of things. I don't go into the the ED in the trauma room A and ask him, hey, what's your favorite football team? Huh? Tell me. I don't go in there and ask him, hey, uh, uh, did you vote for Trump or Biden? Who did you vote for? I never ask him that question. They're fighting for their life. They're trying to get air in their lungs. They're trying to get blood in their veins. They're trying to survive to live. And I ask him, do you know the Lord? Question number one. Not how big is your bank account? How many cars do you have in your four-car garage? Do you know the Lord? Because they're in the trauma. They're in the serious moment of their their life. And they need to know that people care about their soul. Amen? Because your soul spends eternity somewhere forever. So you need to make sure what their destiny is. I love what Jesus said in John 16. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth. You will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Am I I been through trials, sorrows? Yes, you're all of us have. Some of you are going through some right now. You're in that right now. I've been to some of your funerals, sat there, wept, cried, said, Lord, I don't understand, but I'm trusting you in the journey. Had a man pass away recently in the, IC, in the ICU. He was young, great family. Love the Lord, family, love the Lord. And they kept asking, Pastor Bruce, tell us why. Tell us why. I said, I don't know why. But I'm going to trust the Lord in the midst of the sorrow because Jesus is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, Isaiah 53. He knows. He's been there. He knows how it feels when you suffer, when you're broken, when you wonder, how am I going to make it? But here in in Matthew 14, Jesus brought the disciples here in the boat in the storm. Now, I often think about where he's praying in the mountain, went into a mountain to pray. He's on top of a mountain looking out at the Sea of Galilee, and there's wind, and there's rain, and there's waves, and he can see him in the boat. 
He sees you right now. He sees where you are. He sees what you're going through. He sees you saying, God, why, how am I going to make it? Help me through. He sees you. He brought me here. He's in the mountain watching him over there going, hey, uh, are we, we going to drown down here? The Lord told us to go across. We're trying to get across. He knows all about it. And he knows how much you can take. That's why now in 2022, Memorial Heights Baptist Church planning a VBS is the most important summer of VBS ever in this community. Hear me, crowd. Ever. The VBS you launch is it in June, I guess it's in June, right? You're launching it in June. It's the most important VBS you've ever done in the history of this church. Why? Our community is a mess. And families need Jesus now more than ever. Than ever. You'll be saying, how can I help VBS? Can I bring some, some, some cookies, whatever? Can I come and teach? Can I bring some bunny rabbits or dogs, whatever, to bring out the kids? Anything. When I was a pastor at Calvary Baptist, we had huge vacation Bible schools. I mean huge. I'm driving vans. People are saying, hey, that van can only have 15. How many got in there? I got 25 kids in, 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 in this van. <laughs> Come on, kids, get in here. Bring them to church. Hearing about Jesus. He brought me here. Number two, how to handle a promise. He's praying for me. He's praying for me. He went into the mountain by himself to, to, to pray. What's he praying for? He's praying for Thomas and Bartholomew and Peter and James and John. He's praying for all of them. While they're in the boat, he's praying. Does he know the storm is coming? The answer is what, church? He knows the storm's coming. They're in the storm. He sent them in there. It says there in Matthew 14, verse number 23, he sent them, the multitudes, away and went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And on the evening came, he was alone there. It's okay to be alone to pray. Do you have a prayer room in your house? You got a place to pray in your house? Well, I go outside in the porch and the cats are all over me and the dogs look at me and I'm trying to, you know. Find somewhere alone to be, to, to pray for your family, for yourself. He's praying for me. He's on the mountain. He sees them down there. He's watching them as they're trying to survive in verse number, number, number 24. The boat's in the, in the middle and it's tossed by the waves. What are you being tossed about with right now? You're tossing in your bed. You're tossing around. You're, How am I going to handle it? What, what, what job should I take? How about my, my new venture for my, for my work? How am I going to handle all this? You're being tossed. Should, should I buy this house? Should I, should I sell? Should we move? You're being tossed. But Jesus is praying for us there. And how does Jesus pray? Lord, be with them in the middle of the storm. Lord, may they realize I am acquainted with grief. I'm a man of sorrows. I know what you're going through. I feel what you're feeling. So when we ask, does, does, does God really know how we feel? Yes, he does. God knows how you, how you feel. He knows that you are broken. And you just see there in the, uh, in the text, in verse number 25, now in the fourth watch of the night. So that they've been in that boat at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 midnight, still in the boat. The fourth watch wasn't until 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. The first watch was 6 p. to 9 p. The second watch was 9 p. to 12 midnight. Third watch, 12 midnight to 3 a.m. And the fourth watch was 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So in the fourth watch of a night, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., Jesus comes down out of the mountain and he's walking on the water to go to meet them. Amazing. He's coming to where they are. He's coming to meet them. That's number three. He will come to me. He will come to me. And the fourth watch of a night is 3 a.m. Now, friends, Memorial Heights Baptist Church has, has been known in this, this community as, as a great church. It's a great church because you got great faith, you believe in a great God, and you still preach the great gospel. And the gospel is still changing lives. 
This church doesn't tell people, well, you need a, you need a, a psychologist. Maybe you do, but you need Jesus first. Okay? Well, you need to go see a counselor. Man, maybe it's true, but you need to see Dr. Jesus first. And once you meet him and he saves your, your, your soul, you realize he will come to me. My, my dear wife Judy's here this morning, and we have been through some storms of life and, and, and just wondered what's God going to do in our lives. I resigned my church in August of 2016, had, had nowhere to go. Substitute teacher in a school, I was working at at the Walmart as a greeter. I didn't know what God had for me. Cutting firewood with a chainsaw, jumped off a fence, broke my right leg horrendously, fractured it, bad, bad news. Two surgeries on my leg, bolts, screws, rods. I'm, I'm laid up for four or five months. And I'm saying, Lord, please don't put me on the shelf. Please don't put me on the shelf. And my wife kept saying to me, listen, honey, it, it, it's going to work out. She had to give me two shots every day in the, in the uh, stomach. For some reason, she enjoyed that. <laughs> Hold your place here. <laughs> All of a sudden, I went to a job fair in, down, in downtown Cumberland. I was substitute teaching at, at uh, Mount Ridge and uh, all over, man. Braddock, I substituted over, over, over here at the school, watched the middle for a while, then I, then I, I, had, to, I had to get resaved. <laughs> that place was rough, man. But God opened up a door at the hospitals to apply as a chaplain. And they said, well, you got to have all these, all, these, all these kind of qualifications. And so God placed me there in the hospital with 2,000 employees. 200 people in the hospital that need to be saved. And I praise God where he has placed me. I praise God that I waited for him to move in, in my life. And I give God praise because, because the Lord came to me and says, I, I prepared this for you. He will come to you. Now, interesting, in verse number 26, the disciples saw him walking and they, they weren't sure what it was. Is it a ghost? Is it a man? There's waves. There's wind blowing. I can't tell who he is. They say it might be a ghost. They cried out for fear. Now, you, you got a choice here. Your choice, there's three choices. You can live by fear, feelings, or faith. Fill it in that blank. If, if you didn't get the, uh, the notes, we'll, we'll help you. Fear, feelings, or faith are your three choices there. Some folks... When they go through the storms, they're just fear all over. What, what am I going to do? I can't handle this. How am I going to do? do? And they just weep and cry. I've seen him punch the wall in the hospital. I've seen him punch, try to punch me in the hospital because they're living in, in fear. They don't say, God, we need you. God, we need your help, please. Fear, feelings, or faith. That's the, the uh, choice. Now, I thought it interesting that Jesus tells them in verse number 27, he yells to him, hey, be a, be a good cheer. <laughs> Waves are coming in and smile, it's going to be all right. Waves are coming in, the wind's blowing you around, the boat's going this way. Be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. Verse 27. Don't you love that? Fear, feelings, or faith. Now, I find it interesting that Peter's the only guy who speaks up. Nobody else talks except Peter. He yells out, Lord, if, Lord, if, circle that word if in your Bible, Lord, if it's you, Lord, if I had a better job, Lord, if I had a better spouse, Lord, if I had a bigger house, Lord, if I had a lot more money in the, in the bank, if my 401k didn't lose 10,000 last week, if, if, yeah, Lord, if it's you, verse 28. Command me to come to you on the water. Now, friends, Jesus doesn't give him a three-point outline. Well, let me give you this, this illustration. Do you understand the doctrine of justification? Do you understand what it means to be regenerated? He gives him one word, and what's the one word? Come. Come. Peter had an if in his 
applause there. Lord, if Memorial Heights had a, a, a better men's ministry, a better women's ministry, if they had a, a bigger choir, if they had this and that, all these ifs. And God's saying to you, will you realize I'm coming to your family, to your church, to your life to change you? to change you so you trust me in the journey. Sometimes we don't want to trust God in the journey. Sometimes we have a hard time trusting him in what's going on. 3 a.m. In the, in the morning, they've been in, on, in that boat most of the night. They're sweating, they're crying out, they're soaking wet, they're drenched. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you. Now, I thought it was interesting in verse number 28, if it's you, command me to come. Peter starts coming out of, the, out of the boat, and the rest of them are going, what is he doing? Has he lost his mind? You don't have on a life preserver. You don't have on a, a, a vest. He gets out of the boat, and he starts walking toward Jesus. Here he comes. He's coming toward Jesus, and he's, his eyes are on the Lord, and the Lord, just, he's just, just standing there, hands up, you know. And here comes Peter walking on the water to go to meet Jesus. But look at verse number 30. When he saw, he saw what? That the wind was boisterous, verse 30. He was what, church? Afraid. He's living in fear. He's looking right at Jesus' face. Wind blowing. He's got his hair, you know, going to come, his beard's there. And and he's on, he's on, he's walking right on the on the water, and Peter is watching him, and all of a sudden Peter takes his eyes off the Lord, and verse 30, he begins to sink, and he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Not some big long prayer, thou in the heavens who knows me, oh I know. Three words, Lord save me. You, you ever pray three words? You're driving on the road and some nut could cut you right off. Lord save me. I give him high beans. <laughs> Lord, save me. So sometimes driving around here just drives me nuts. Anybody there with me? Man, you just went. Is everybody on a Sunday drive? I'm trying to get to work. Lord, save me. He cries out. See, friends, I can live by fear, I can live by feelings, or I can live by faith. What is faith? F-A-I-T-H. Spell it, church. F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust him. Forsaking all, I trust him. So when somebody here has, has a need, we want to forsake all and say, listen, God wants to meet your spiritual need first, and he may meet your physical need and your your marriage needs and relational needs. He wants to meet your needs. I thank God that in many of our high schools, we have FCA clubs going around in the area, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And they're telling people what it means to live by faith. If it's you, Lord, command me to come. If. And Jesus told him to come. Number four fourth promise he will help me grow he will help me grow every hurt you go through every tear you shed will help you grow every time you share God's word and pray with somebody put your arm around them and pray with them you're helping them to, to, to grow to have a vertical perspective but I don't want to grow I'm broken I'm hurting I'm going through this these tests in my life I'm a I'm a mess the purpose of testing What's the reason for sickness, the reason for hurts, the reason for disappointments? 1 Peter 1, 6, so be, be truly glad. There's a wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. He will help me grow. He's telling Peter, I'm there for you, Peter. Now, 
people always wonder, well, I wonder how far Peter really went. Did he go just a few feet and fall? Well, if Jesus was too far away to recognize who it might be, a ghost or a man, and Peter gets out of the boat, he's walking toward Jesus, and he must have gotten pretty close for Jesus to be right there with, with, with his hand to grab him. And the closest Peter was to Jesus was when he was sinking. Hear me, folks. The closest Jesus was to Peter was when Peter was going down like a brick, straight down. Lord, save me. And a hand comes down and grabs him. Thank God Jesus was right there at the right time. The purpose of testing is to teach you to trust the Lord in the journey, my friend. And Peter was as close to Jesus as you could be, and the Lord grabs him and tells him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When this church was first built, many years ago, people said, Oh, I doubt that church will do anything. Parking lot's packed every week. Somebody told me this morning that you had reached, I guess in the past couple of weeks, 300 in church. Isn't that awesome? 300, man, that's awesome. Great music, hand clapping music, gets you all excited. So when the pastor gets up here to preach, you're ready to go. He will help me grow. He will help me through. Peter realized he was sinking and he said, Lord, will you save me? And verse number 31, and it took Jesus about 10 minutes before he stretched out his hand. Is that what it says? And it took Jesus a little while to think about, should I save him or just let him, let him, get half drowned. What's the word say there in verse number 31? Immediately, right then, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Immediately, he grabbed him. You see, friends, God does not change us in order to love us. He loves us in order to change us. And he loves Peter enough to grab him by the hand, pull him up out of the water, and said, Peter, you have a little faith, but we're going to walk back to the boat together. And they got right there, and, they're, and there's James, John, Nathaniel, they're all going, here comes Peter with Jesus. They're both walking on the water. What's going on? Where's my cell phone? Get a video of this. Ah, oh, you can't do it. Let me get, let me get a, a pan view. I think it's awesome. Verse 32, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. What in the world? Number five, he will see me through. He will see me through. We don't live by explanations. We live by, by promises. And you will never learn that God is all you need until he is all you need. Hear me. I'll say it again. You'll never learn that God is all you need until he is all you need. My friends, God's got a plan for, for this church, for your life, for our county, for our state. I'm not looking to, to the politicians to get me out of this mess. I'm not looking to the, to the, the governor or the mayor. I'm not looking to the president. I'm, a, I'm looking and saying, Lord, a vertical look. Will you help us? Focus on you again. And the verse behind me is a key verse. That verse is what our nation needs right there. Because there's a people that God has. There's a prayer that God hears. There's a promise that God honors in that verse right there. If my people, the people that God has, to call by my name, shall humble themselves in prayer, the prayer that God hears will seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. The promise God honors in that, in that verse. The people, the prayer, the promise. Extra sermon, free of charge. You can, you can tell Pastor DJ, we heard two sermons today. <laughs> he will see me through. What was Peter afraid of? The surroundings, the wind. When was Peter the closest to Jesus when he was sinking? 
And when you're sinking and you feel the hand, that's when you find I'm closest to the Lord when I'm broken and I'm in tears and I've wet the whole floor with, with my tears and I have no more tears to shed. You find the Lord is closest to you at that moment. What did Jesus show the disciples? Verse 33, then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. This next slide is a picture that I really love. It's looking from the water, looking straight up. I love that view. That's Peter's view. The hand reached. Well, it was dark. Yeah, it was dark, but there's, there's enough moonlight there. He's seeing the Lord's hand reach down. He's waiting for me to, Lord, just save me. How many people in the hospital have I talked to who said, Pastor Bruce, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or hell. I have no idea. I said, well, you can know he's the way, the truth, and the life. You can know he's the savior of the world. You can know him as your redeemer if you'll trust him today. And they, and they bow their head, and then they pray, Lord, save my soul. Forgive me of my, of my sins. And I tell them, we don't live by explanations. We live by promises. And there I am on the seventh south floor, Seven South, all those oncology inpatients, and the cancer has racked their bodies, and the cancer is, is, is taking them out. And they grab me with, with their skeleton-like hand and say, oh, Pastor Bruce, I don't understand what God's doing, but I know I got a heavenly home someday. Amen. And I have stood there by those, those dear saints and held their hand. And we sing together as a, as a family. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side as they're ushered from here to heaven. Because 2 Corinthians 5 is still true. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Peter found this out. The closer he was to, to the Lord, the more he understood what it meant to go through trials. How can I become a water walker? Three ways. Number one, know God's word. Know God's word. You want to walk on water, you better know what God's word says. Well, I had this dream that I was uh, in this boat and I was going out to the beach and had this dream. Man, you need to focus on what, what, God, what God's word says. I get people in the hospital tell me, you know, I had this dream and I, I saw this guy come. I said, listen, friends, you need to concentrate on what the word says. You need to be ready to know what, what God says. Number two, be willing to obey. And three, step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. Some of you here are saying, I don't, I don't know what God has for me. If I have this, if I get all my ducks in a row, if I have all the ABCs, you need to be saying, Lord, I'm going to walk out of the boat and trust you for each step of the way. Keep my eyes on you, dear Lord. I'm waiting for, for somebody in Congress to, to just say, we need to put God back in our nation. We need to see folks praying in their churches for our country. Because God does business with those who mean business. And when you mean business, God will do business in your life. And Peter realized that. That when a child of God loves the word of God and he sees the son of God, he is changed by the spirit of God into the image of God for the glory of God because he's found the truth of God. Peter learned the lesson. He gets into the boat, and everybody's on their face. The wind's gone. The waves are gone. It's quiet. And maybe the sun's trying to come over the horizon. And he said, you are the son of God. Man, that's awesome. Because God does business with those who mean business. Maybe you're here today, and you're going through some trials, some storms in your life. You're saying, man, I, I mean, this, in the last year, buried my sister, buried the dad, buried mom. All these issues, the, the, the COVID thing was a nightmare. You're saying, Lord, how are you going to get us through? 
Jesus tells Peter, Peter, I've got you. Peter, I've got you. And I'm going to hold on to you and pull you up out of the water. And even though you may be wet, we're going together back to the boat together. Isn't that awesome? Together with Jesus. He's probably going back there saying, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Yeah. He's singing a song. He's singing, Lord, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. You see, friends, Jesus knew that the storm was coming and he didn't leave him alone. He came to him. So the five promises. One, he brought me here. Two, he's praying for me. Three, he will come to me. Four, he will help me grow. And five, he will see me through. I can live by promises or I can live by the pressure in my life. And so many times, Christians are guilty of worry. We worry. We wring our hands. Like, what are we going to do? And we just we walk around like, like we don't even know who God is. We're all worried. Some of us need to repent of the sin of worry. I know you have a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter. I know they need Jesus. Will you give him to the Lord and let God work? Just give him to Jesus. And maybe you need to, to, to come this morning. And say, Lord, our church needs you. Our nation needs you. I want to invite you to come. And fill this place with prayer, a prayer altar of folks to come and pray and seek God's face. Maybe you're here and you need to be saved. You need Christ as your Savior. You come. We want to pray for you, with you, to help you trust the Lord as your Savior. Maybe you're here and you're so burdened for our country. You can't help but come and kneel here and say, oh, God. We just need you to touch our country again and, and give us some leaders that will re re respect God's holy word. We're tired of living by fear and feelings. We want to live by faith. Let's bow our heads. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You're here and you, you'd say, Pastor Bruce, I really I want to do business with the Lord. I have been broken. I have been an emotional wreck, and Lord, I need you today. I need you to touch my family and touch my life. I'm burdened and I'm broken about my future, my family's future. I'm burdened for my, for my spouse, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. I'm burdened for them. And Lord, I want to come today and kneel and pray in my seat and see God do great things in my family. I don't want to worry. I want to trust you. And Lord, I'm coming this morning because I'm pouring my burdens before you. I'm going to leave all my burdens at the cross. I want to believe 1 Peter 5. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And I want to learn how to be a water walker and trust God in the storms of my life. Lord, I want to come to you this day and say, God, do a work in my life. Help our church to reach more people for Jesus. Help our church, our leadership, to have the right vision for the future. Because I want to know God's word. I want to be willing to obey. And I want to step out and walk on the water as God leads me. Lord, I want to bring all my anxiety, all my hurts before you because you know how I feel. Lord, would you work in the invitation in a special way? There's some out here, Lord, that need to be saved. Some out here that have never trusted Christ as their Savior and they need to. Some are here, Lord, that have never bowed their head and said, Lord, save my soul and they need Christ. Help, Lord, to come today and say, I need Jesus in my life today. Lord, move in the invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet as the piano plays just softly. I want to invite you to come. If you're a dear lady and you can't kneel, you sit on the front pew. You come right now. You say, I'm burdened for my kids, my grandkids. I'm burdened for my family. I want to come and pray. You step out and come.
Young person, you step out and come. Lord, you're saying, Lord, I, I want you to use me in my college, in my high school. You step out and come right now. You come and kneel here. Say, Lord, I need you. I'm burdened for my, for my city. I'm burdened for my family. I've got a prodigal son or daughter or grandson, granddaughter that needs to come back to you, Lord. You step out and come and pray for them. Come as God leads you right now. That's right. Come on down. Come on down. we leave today I want us to quote this verse that's there on the on the wall right underneath the baptistry let's say it together ready if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land amen it's powerful it's powerful Father, I pray you give us a fantastic Lord's Day with our family. Give us a great Monday as we remember the sacrifice for freedom. God, help us to honor those who have given their lives that we might have freedom and life in the United States of America. Lord, we need you to work in our hearts. So many, Lord, are broken and bruised and battered. And they need to know that God loves them and cares about them. Even in the storm that they're in, he's there to say, I've come to meet you where, where you are. God bless this great church, the leadership in a special way. And they see souls won to Christ in the months and years to, to come. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, hey, God bless you. Thanks so much.